Hi, I'm Gary Thompson from FX Open UK, and we're back again to take a look at the major stories that have been affecting the market this week. We're going to start with the Great British Pound, and dare we say it, signs that it's beginning to rise against most of the other majors and minor currencies. Now, it's fair to say the pound has faced a bit of an onslaught recently. The last two years have been particularly tough for it. We've had COVID, we've had lockdowns, we had a furlough scheme in the UK, which is basically where people were paid to stay at home, which has cost the economy an absolute fortune. Now, this is twin with Rishi Sunak, um, who was our Chancellor of the Exchequer, now fighting to become the next Prime Minister, embarked on a £400 billion borrowing programme. All of this at some point has got to be paid back. And of course, don't forget inflation, which figures this week showed hit 9.4% in the UK in June. And this is all at the same time as a cost of living crisis. Prices going up, obviously. We're seeing issues with energy, having a major impact on sterling. Now, the Bank of England are meeting on the 4th of August to see how much they're going to increase interest rates by. This is their main weapon against this rising inflation. What's that going to do for sterling? Something to keep your eyes on. As I say, it's been reasonably positive this week against most of the other currencies. The only anomaly really being the US dollar, which, despite having their inflation at 40-year highs, seems to be bucking the trend and doing pretty well. One of the reasons for that, though, in terms of the Great British Pound, is that US productivity is still fairly strong compared to the UK. The UK is still not at capacity from pre-COVID days. And on top of all of that, we've had the Prime Minister resign. We've got an ongoing battle about who's going to be the next Prime Minister. So these political concerns are also weighing down. Certainly one to keep your eyes on in the coming weeks. For our second story, we're going to stick with some currency action. Firstly, I want to take a look at the euro dollar. Small signs that maybe there's a recovery starting there, maybe some of the imbalance between the dollar and some of the other majors is beginning to settle down. As we know, the eurozone, similar situation to the UK, but also, of course, to the US with what's been happening. We started a recovery wave above 101.50 yesterday, the 20th of July, and we started to see a key bullish trend line forming support near 102.25. Again, nobody's quite sure the drivers for it, but it certainly could well be the sign that a little bit of this imbalance is coming out and we may well see a little bit more recovery, a little bit more strength for the euro. Again, sticking with currencies, let's have us take a look at the dollar against the Swiss franc. Now, yesterday again, broke key support near 0 0.9750 zone. Interesting level for it started a fresh decline after failing to clear the 9880 resistance line just a few days ago. So again, a little bit there happening with the dollar, a little bit of easing off or a little bit of strength coming out of some of the other majors, other, other considered currencies across the globe. Certainly the foreign exchange markets are moving as usual and are ones, keen ones to keep your eyes on. Okay, we're going to move away from currencies now and take a look at another major commodity in the world and that's oil. What could make it rocket in price? A lot of talk about this in the market so far this week. On a visit to Iran, Vladimir Putin turned around and said, proposals to limit the purchase of Russian oil will lead to similar situation as gas. Prices will skyrocket. Bit of a worrying statement, considering the position of power that he's in. This was also backed up by the Institute of Global Security. He said, with caps on Russian oil being unreasonable, an idea which could to an increase of the price to $140 a barrel. JP Morgan have also come out and said if we do see some form of cap on prices, production, buying ability, Russia could cut their production by 3 million barrels per day. Now that could see the price increase to 190 bucks. Futures charts show some very strong demand around the $93.33 mark. It briefly fell below that back on the 14th of July, but quickly rebounded. Now, if background fundamentals that we're talking about here in terms of the supply or caps on the prices of Russian oil, favourite, could we see some bulls organising a rally and pushing that price up even further? A bit like FX markets, moving on a daily basis, one to keep your eye on. Time to look at a different market altogether. Let's have a look at some equities and a big tech stock languishing over in the US as things stand. The week started with some pretty big moves in terms of what we call the giants of the tech arena. Apple fell more than 2% in trading on Monday, 
That was after news came out about plans to slow down on hiring and spending over the coming 12, 18, 24 months. At Meta, Facebook if you like, Mark Zuckerberg turned around and said he will be telling the staff they no longer need or no longer want to simply go home. Sounds a bit of an HR nightmare to me. But these are definitely having an impact with some commentators thinking there is further to go on the downside for these giants of the tech world. Apple down 17% during 2022. That's a significant drop. Microsoft and Google Alphabet have fallen in value over a sustained period of time. But are these few giants of the tech world having a bearing on all other tech stocks as well? Perhaps on the negative? Now, the spread between prospective earning multiples of the S&P 500 information technology sector and the benchmark S&P 500 index, they're the highest since 2004, which a lot of people have taken as a good sign. Perhaps these few tech giants have affected the entire outlook for big tech, or some of them are actually doing quite well. Certainly a sector to keep your eye on. Certainly lots of news coming about in that sector over the next few weeks. Have a look at it. Make your own trading decisions. That's it for this week. Wish you luck with your trading in the week ahead.